Hello, I'm finally sitting down to do my February wrap up. My name's Faye and in February I read 13 books that I want to talk about. Well, read, I listened to two of them on audiobook, uh, four on my Kindle and the rest, what's that? Seven, I have in physical format. So let's get stuck in. I'll start with the ones that I had in physical form because that'll make you editing easier for me um, and we'll just give it a whirl. So I'm gonna start with three books that I all gave three out of five stars and those were solid books but I wanted to give them more stars and therefore I think my judgment um, is perhaps a little bit strict, I'm not sure. Um, the first one is Even the Stars Look Lonesome by Maya Angelou very shiny old-fashioned cover here. I picked this up uh, last summer when I was visiting my grandmother and because she wants to move, wanted to move at the time she wanted to go, me to go through books and take whatever I wanted, um, which was amazing. And I finally got around to reading this. It's not a very long book and it has little essays um, on Maya Angelou's life. It's a lot about who relationships, being famous, knowing famous people, having an exciting life in music and entertainment. Um, and I was a little disappointed just because uh, I've never read anything by her. I do think because I liked the writing so much, there's a bit of poetry in here as well, which actually resonated quite a lot. Um, I will go and read her what's her famous like memoir called? I know why the caged bird sings, I believe. Yes. Um, I, I think a lot of the essays in here were simply too short and some of them could have been culled. I personally really don't like it when I get the feeling like someone's name dropping. Um, some people find it really interesting. I don't. Um, so a lot of these weren't really for me. The next one that I was slightly disappointed by is The Girls by Emma Klein. I ended up of course, also giving this three out of five stars. This follows our main character, Evie, I believe, Evie, um, who in the summer of 1969 falls in with a group of bad girls um, and desperately wants to be their friend. She's a very, very unhappy girl, um, but she sort of gets wrapped up in something larger and far more dark and sinister than she's expecting and ready for. Um, and we get snippets of her summer of 1969 and present day. All of the machinations, all of the happenings are heavily inspired by the, um, the Mason family and the murders um, surrounding this sort of cult. And I didn't know much about what actually happened um, prior to reading this book. And after finishing it, I did go on a bit of a Wikipedia spree to just sort of read up what actually happened. And I was almost a bit disappointed that this feels a bit like a, a great book as far as marketing goes. People are interested in serial killers and dark, charismatic, well, psychopaths, but I didn't feel like this book had that much more to offer. I found myself sort of just waiting for it all to go horribly wrong and I found the main character a little bit annoying. I still gave it three stars because even though she's so annoying, I actually found it really relatable um, and a good portrayal of a sort of unhappy teenage girl. I'm not saying that every teenage girl is so depressed, um, but I, I thought, I thought that was an interesting depiction, feeling so uncomfortable in your own skin and so misunderstood by everyone around you. So I did appreciate that, but all in all, I was just expecting to love it. And then the book that I'm probably the most sad about not liking more is There There by Tommy Orange. It's a beautiful book to begin with. Um, and I was really interested to read this because I've never, to the best of my knowledge, read a book by a Native American voice um, and so much of this was great and um, just great in its own right, not for some agenda to read something about a voice that needs to be heard. Um, this follows a lot of characters um, and we get chapters from the point of view of many different characters, some of them returning, um, how they are all, um, all their 
individual stories are leading towards a powwow. And how do I put this? I really liked how the book was constructed. There's a prologue that I found incredibly powerful. I talked about this with a friend and it, it, I liked how different our opinions on this were. were. The prologue is a non-fiction. It explains what happened to um, indigenous Native Americans and the atrocities that they were subjected to. I am German. I grew up largely in Germany. I don't know a lot about this history. So I really liked this sort of gut punch and how horrible this sort of mini history in sort of six pages was. And I found it really interesting that the fictionalized part, the, 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 the story <laughs> that follows that sort of non-fiction prologue just couldn't shock me as much as what had really happened. And I find that really interesting because I find that quite often it's the complete reverse that we've kind of become desensitized to actual history and actually horrible things people have truly done. Um, and the more personal stories are the ones that will sort of still hit our emotions. And I really liked how this was reversed in this story, but um, on the whole, I thought there were just too many characters and some were really interesting and some I thought were either just repetitive or caricatures um, or just didn't add that much to the story. I felt like some of the characters demanded more of a story and now they just sort of got snapshots. Yes, you could argue that all of that was done on purpose. The, the rhythm of how the story progresses and how we almost have this crescendo and the story speeds up was really well crafted but I just didn't feel very emotionally immersed which I think is a shame because it it's supposed to emotionally affect you so I was a bit disappointed. Next I have three books that I gave four stars. I gave four stars to You by Caroline Ketnes. Um, I was really eager to read this so that I could jump into the Netflix series. And this, as many of you may know, follows our main character. I've forgotten his name. It doesn't matter, he's a creep, Joe. Joe. And Joe just gets really obsessed um, with this girl and starts stalking her. The sort of catch with this book that is told from his point of view and often in mm, second person. Um, I found this really hard to read because I felt quite sickened by the main character um, and it takes quite a long time to truly escalate but you can from the first page know how like truly horrible things are he's going through and because um he, it's 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 told from his point of view he thinks there's nothing wrong with that which i found even more scary i would recommend this if you're looking for a really nasty sort of psychological thriller i also thought it was quite realistic um, which isn't necessarily something that I demand in my thrillers, but it made it, again, more eerie and difficult to stomach. Um, maybe I was a little put down, let down by the ending, um, but I'm not even sure about that. Um, just overall a really immersive and kind of nasty book. Um, and then I have two comics. I have the fifth saga volume which I won't say much about because it is the fifth. Um, we continue following the parents of a cross interspecies child. Um, the parents come from two different um, races, races and planets and those are at war. Um, I thought this was a bit more of the same. I still gave it four stars because the same is still amazing, um, but I didn't feel like the story progressed that much in this one, but I still really like Saga, so uh, yeah, I don't even mind that much. And then I read Der Ursprung der Liebe by Liv Strömquist. I believe this hasn't been translated to English yet. The author is Swedish, so this is the German translation of this um, graphic novel. 
and this is very um almost academic she turns a lot of actual actually published scientific papers into comic strips and all the commentary is on our really useless gender typical construal of what heterosexual relationships should look like um and how that is just really not helping anyone i thought this was really interesting i thought it was quite of dense for a graphic novel. I didn't read this in one sitting, I was expecting to, and I found myself wanting to put it aside so that I would mull over what she says in this a little bit more. Um, I also found myself really wanting to disagree with some things, which I think is great. I don't just want to swallow what I read uncritically. Um, and some of the things that I found myself sort of rebelling against made me also question some of the... Um, expectations that I have to my romantic relationships um, so I thought this was really worthwhile and yeah if you're German you can read the translation if you're Swedish or Swedish speaking you can even go to read the original which at times um, might even be even funnier I'm not sure if I sometimes missed some jokes maybe um, although the translation does it does work flawlessly and then I have one book that I gave five out of five stars. This is not not only the my favorite physical copy that I read this month, but also the favorite book all in all. I'm, I'm losing my words because I loved it so much. I read Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. Um, I've wanted to read this too a long for a long time and just well, now I have. Um, I have no reason that I waited so long. We follow Jojo, who I believe is a 13 year old boy who grows up with his grandparents, um, him and his younger sister. Um, his mum is also around, but pretty damn useless. Um, and this just explores poverty, um, race in America, um, drug abuse as the family decide to travel to, to take a road trip to um, welcome back Jojo's father who's been released from prison. Um, there are unexpected um, magical realism elements in this. Um, well, unexpected to me. Now they won't be to you because I do really really recommend this book. I thought those magical realism elements were really subtly weaved into the story. I thought it gave it a really beautiful tone despite um, the, the, the emotions in this being so horrible. And this achieved what I, what I had wished some of the other books would do. This really made me feel for the characters, even the really unlikable ones. Um, it made me want to pluck Jojo and his sister out of their circumstances and help them out. The um, beginning scene already sets the, mo the, the mood. Um, I really, really strongly recommend this and will go on to read the other books Jasmine Wood has written. I listened to two audiobooks. I listened to On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, which I ended up giving four out of five stars. This is the same author who wrote The Hate You Give, which I read last year. And On the Come Up works perfectly as an audiobook because it is about Brie, a teenage girl who has a real talent for rapping and um, writing song lyrics. Um, and she wants to make it big in hip hop. Her family is really, really struggling financially. And this all turns into her story and her wanting to make it big to support her family. Um, much like The Hate You Give. It does also explore the current situation for black people in America. Um, but I, in a way, found some of the ideas in this one more nuanced and therefore more interesting than in The Hate You Give. Brie is a much louder character and therefore maybe, maybe some people won't initially warm to her so much, but I liked her more 
for it because I think everyone is allowed to be loud. Um, and I really like the um, message that is conveyed in this book that depending on who you are, what you look like, people will have more issue with you being loud um, and her being a black girl she is expected to be quiet and you know if you want to make it big as a hip hopper and like do like rap battles um why should you be quiet she has something to say um so i thought that was really great um and just a really good YA novel and the second audiobook i listened to was the subtle art of not giving a fuck by mark manson which i gave two out of five stars two stars because he did bring up a few sentences, comments that stuck with me and I found interesting to talk about after finishing listening to the book. But on the whole, the idea that, you know, we shouldn't sweat the small stuff and that we give too many fucks about things that are not improving our quality of life just was a bit too common sense to me and also really could be summarized in those two sentences and didn't need a whole book. Um, I also thought it sort of petered out a bit sort of after the halfway point and then he talks about which um, values we can pursue in life that will truly um, result in happier lives because he says that just wanting to be happy isn't very useful um, and despite that idea being interesting I feel the values he then talks about are just highly personal and um, got very sort of self-helpy which is something I don't necessarily look for in non-fiction books um, so on the whole meh not amazing also why do you constantly have to say fuck in every second, third sentence, it's not edgy. And then finally, I read four books on my Kindle, which um, looking at the four books I, kind of makes me smile, really shows how I use my Kindle. The first book I read was The Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. I am not sure how that is pronounced, I'm sorry. Um, I should have looked it up. I gave this three out of five stars. This is a 400 page YA fantasy novel which I believe is going to be the first in a series um, and we follow our main character who belongs to the paper case which is the lowest case in this three-tiered society. Um, she, to the best of our knowledge, doesn't have any um, superhuman abilities belonging to the paper case and then in this society there's also the steel case which are humans with demon or animal like features and then there is the moon case which are fully demon sort of animal looking people who have amazing abilities and they sort of rule over everyone else and our main character, Lei, I believe, is chosen as one of the eight in this year, nine paper girls to serve the demon king, basically as his concubine. And they got, get taught in the art of seduction and are supposed to be ready to please at his every women fancy. And I read this book in one day, so it's obviously a fast-placed fast-paced um, entertaining read, although it sounds weird to say entertaining because it does really explore um, really tough topics, you know. Um, there are rape scenes, not necessarily on the page, um, but sort of huge trigger warnings for, for rape and violence and slavery. Um, but I just felt like some of the characters fell a bit flat and the whole I found it a bit predictable. I would be curious what could have happened with this story if there hadn't been this need to fit it into a classical like series setup. The book is obviously setting us up for the next sort of maybe sort of road trip fantasy second novel in a trilogy. I found that a little bit too expected. 
Um, but yes, like happy three out of five stars. I, I It was a really quick read and it got me over a bit of a reading slump that I was experiencing. And then the final three Kindle books that I wrote, read, I all gave three out of five stars, um, which is a really typical rating for these types of books. I read The One Who's Not The One, one by Keris Stainton, which is a sort of chick lit book about a woman living in London who's not really that into her job. She stopped doing stand-up comedy, which she loved doing, after breaking up with her ex-boyfriend or rather being dumped by him and she falls for her ex's brother. That was sort of a trope that I now know I don't really like. Um, a bit too incestuous and I found myself not really rooting for the couple. Um, I gave it three out of five stars, but upon thinking about it, I'm not sure if I would actually give it 2.5. I liked the very English tone and the setting of London, also uh, some of the jokiness sort of fit in with the slightly more sort of snarky English vibe, but on the whole, you know, not that amazing. I also gave three out of five stars to the four day fling, four day fling um, by Emma Klein. I'm uh, glancing to the side. Um, this is the story of Poppy and Adam who have a one night stand. And in the next, the next morning, Poppy asks Adam whether she would accompany him to her sister's wedding because shock horror in the 21st century, a woman cannot attend a wedding unaccompanied. Um, but I like the trope of a fake relationship, so they pretend to be in a committed relationship for the whole weekend of the whole wedding shebang, um, but I didn't really get what the problem was. Like, inevitably, with a romance novel, the couple waits to get together and can't overcome some hurdle and I just thought the hurdle was really really fabricated I didn't really get it um but yeah so this is a bit more on the steamy side there are sex scenes in it it's a romance novel I enjoyed it um <laughs> there's like a slight sort of sport romance spin to that I think that's a genre to some people Adam is a hockey player like a very successful one ice hockey player um so that was fun and then the final book I read was Spring Me Ahead by Jess Fon. This is the third book in uh, Love by the Seasons series, something like that. And this follows Wyatt, who's a recovering drug addict and his love story with a new woman that moves into this small town that I already knew because I read the two preceding books. Um, and some of the scenes I thought were actually really, really well handled. I thought having a recovering drag addict at the center of a love story was well done and interesting to read about. Still, I thought some elements were sort of problematic. I was really disappointed that his love interest is an occupational therapist. Um, having studied psychology myself, uh, it really irks me when psychologists are also expected to act out certain professional skills or tasks in their private life. Um, and on the page it said a few times that she gets even more interested by him when she finds out that he is a more complex character with a dark past. And I just don't think that's a turn on. I think it's fair enough to want to help someone, but I don't, I, I think it's questionable if you think it's sexy that someone has a problem. <sighs> yeah, don't try fixing people. Be there for them if they want to fix something, but don't you be the person fixing them. Anyhow, those were all the books that I read in February. Unfortunately, I didn't read one more book than I would have read one book for every two days. That would have been fun. What did you read in February? Let me know and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.